Now let's talk about IP ranges and IP lists. Um, this is this tab. Uh, here is the main um, blacklist that you can uh, use internally. So for example, you have in your organization, uh, you have a router and behind this router, uh, there are, I don't know, 200 employees sitting with their computers, right? What you can do in this case is you can just add the whole range of your internal IPs and when they try, anybody from this range will try to uh, send an email and the server will be checking how you should be authenticated uh, with these default settings here and you can add the range like for example you have router 192, 168, uh, 1.3 and 192, 168, 1.254, just for example. It includes this whole range and any computer that sits on this IP, right, they will be able to um, send a message through this server without even uh, using the username and password, without authentication. Now, these settings are what, what, uh, what drives this authentication. Uh, what, which way it's going to be authenticated. And there are four different settings. Now, the four settings are, first one, authentication is not required, right? Anyone will be able to relay. And I highly not recommend you to set this because uh, what's going to happen is anybody, it's not even going to look at this list at all. Uh, it's going to be uh, ignoring this list completely. And anybody with uh, any IP, uh, with or without the username, doesn't matter, will be able to relay through your server. This makes your server a black hole, basically, a spam hole. And uh, your IP will be um, blacklisted very quickly, actually, by, by those RBL servers, because they go through the internet and try IP after IP and check if they will be able to connect and relay message. If they will be able to connect and relay message, your IP will be blacklisted very quickly. So don't do that unless this setting is mostly for users who have some kind of internal network that doesn't go anywhere uh, outside uh, and it's not accessible from outside, it's not even visible, then you can um, switch it off completely, authentication is switched off and then you will be able to use it. And anyone uh, on any IP will be able to use it, but it's only for the cases where your server is not visible from outside. Or maybe you have some additional authentication before this server, um, it may so happen. But if you don't, and you want this server to be receiving email for your clients, for your users, for your employees, don't switch on the settings. It's only for people who know what they're doing and they have either additional level of protection or they only use this for internal purposes. Now, what you should be doing instead is switching to this setting. And this setting is recommended at, uh, it says only users that did not pass IP range check must be authenticated. Now, what's going to happen if you specify it uh, first uh, the user's IP will be checked. If it's in this range, in any of these ranges, if the user's IP from which he is sending the email uh, is in this range, it will be automatically passed. Now, if it's not in this range, if it's not in any of these IP ranges, uh, then uh, it's going to see if it's actually authenticated by username and password, and username and password, we'll lo uh, later talk about it, uh, they're set up here. Now, if they are set up and the username and password is correct, then it's going to be passed, right? Then the user will be able to relay. If it's not correct, then uh, the user will be rejected again. So in with this setting, what, what, uh, what the benefits are of this setting is it allows you to have internal and external users. So for example, if you have a, a company with a hundred employees sitting in, on their desks, they have local IP addresses and all of them can just pass with local IP address. But if the server is also facing the internet and allows you to receive your messages and uh, allows you to send messages through this, and um, 
anybody who is actually uh, logging in from outside will have to have a username and password. Since they are not on this range of internal IPs, they will not be able to pass this check. But if they have a username and password here, they obviously should be, then they can just authenticate with username and password and they will pass this check. It's very beneficial. So it works for both internal and external users. Anywhere you, you have users using laptops or users outside working from home, uh, they will be able to log in with their username and password they set up here. But if they don't, and if they're sitting locally, just locally, they can just you know go and uh, be on this range and it's not even going to check for the username and password. If it's going to be there, it's still fine. It's still going to pass it, double pass it. But even without this um, username and password, it's still going to pass it. Now this setting, all users must be authenticated to relay. Obviously it's self-explanatory, it just, no matter the IP range, no matter where you're coming from, if you want to relay, you must have a username and password. It's more stringent and it's more strict. Now, the default setting is this. When you get it out of the box, it's this. But you can set it this way in order for to force everybody to you know, check their IP. And this one is very, very strict. I would highly not recommend you uh, setting this because um, you'll basically disallow anybody, uh, almost anybody, to relay your message, especially from outside. Now, it says any IP that didn't pass the IP range check will be rejected at the moment it connects. So as soon as you connect, if your IP is not here, it's closing the connection. It's like you're entering the door and the door shuts before your nose. So <laughs> it's very inconvenient, but it has this setting. Now, these settings are for uh, making the list blacklist or whitelist. So what, what, what will happen, you can switch it off, do not filter it, you can switch it off completely, but I wouldn't recommend it. And this makes it a, a whitelist, meaning that any, uh, any range that is here is going to be passed. And this, I don't recommend, but it's still here, is going to make it into blacklist meaning that any range that is here is not going to be passed and anything else will pass. So unless you have a library of all the bad IP addresses, um, I would recommend sticking to this. These dudes, they have a library of all the bad IP addresses, so <laughs> you can use them. And, then, and they are updated in real time, so might as well use it. Now, this obviously allows you to add the IP addresses, this allows you to edit the range, and this allows you to remove the range. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Also, do not forget to save it after you're done. After you did this, save it, and uh, it will apply to your server now.